has been so long and we have lost so much since the truth emerged from the so-called tin foil hat conspiracy theorists left to become instead the accepted and understood reality of modern American history. But tonight in the third story on our countdown, a long-awaited Senate report confirms what once we considered unthinkable, even unspeakable. The President of the United States lied to Congress and to the American people to justify launching the first unprovoked war in United States history. Senate Intelligence Committee Chair Jay Rockefeller today related, uh, releasing the long-awaited majority report with support from two Republicans on what President Bush and his top officials did and said regarding the intelligence they had, the intelligence they did not tell us they had, and in some cases, the intelligence they only said they had. There is nothing more serious in public life than the decision to go to war, any war. In too many instances, when making the case for war, administration officials distorted the facts or said things that were not supported by the facts, said things that they knew or should have known were not true. Specifically, of course, Secretary of State Colin Powell's speech to the United Nations, as well as speeches and interviews by Vice President Cheney and Condoleezza Rice, who was then the National Security Advisor. All of them, the report finding, ignoring evidence that cast doubt on their claims, inflating other claims, unsubstantiated claims, presented to us as certainties. Of Saddam Hussein's pursuit of nuclear weapons, weapons of mass destruction of other kinds, his partnership with Al-Qaeda, his potential to deliver a new 9-11 on a nuclear scale, the report creating new problems for Mr. Bush's chosen would-be successor, John McCain, who claimed just last week that every intelligence agency in the world and every intelligence assessment reported that Hussein had WMD, a claim McCain should have known was false even before today's report reminded us that both state and energy department intelligence agencies had raised red flags about the WMD claims, red flags ignored by Mr. Bush, red flags his press secretary today claimed never reached the president's site. A pleasure again to be joined by Richard Clark, a red flag raiser in his own right as a counter-terror advisor to the last two presidents, now author of Your Government Failed You, and online at richardaclark.net. Uh, much time. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Good to be with you, Keith. I use the word lie. The report does not use the word lie. Are there lies? Uh, there certainly are, and this is a big report. But mm -hmm. what it says is statements by the president were not substantiated by intelligence. And then it says statements by the president were contradicted by available intelligence. In other words, they made things up. And they made them up uh, and gave them to Colin Powell and others who believed them. I think Colin Powell did not know that he was lying, uh, but he was. Uh, he was given intelligence that people in the intelligence community at the time knew were not true. This is not a case of 2020 hindsight. This is a case of what was available then. Uh, the National Intelligence Estimate uh, on Iraq and weapons of mass destruction was read by seven senators before they voted to go to war. Mm. And one of them was the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, Bob Graham who read it and went to the floor of the Senate and said, I've read it, I'm chairman of the Intelligence Committee, it's not persuasive, there's not a good case here uh, for this war. So people had the opportunity at the time, uh, if they were reading the intelligence that was available to them. And f to say that this is only something that we could have known years later is just not true. Well, we knew about Senator Graham's uh, doubts. We already knew about the, the dissident intel agencies. The doubts about the aluminum tubes were, were instantaneous. The doubts about the, the clandestine meetings in Germany that never happened. So what are we to make now, in the light of the political realities of today, of Senator McCain's undiminished enthusiasm for uh, and defense of the war, and specifically that this remarkable claim that every intel assessment of the time is, was screaming WMD? Well, the Senator McCain statements are contradicted by the facts, too. The facts in a Senate report, uh, the facts that uh, Republican senators voted for. Uh, he, he is a big proponent of the war, but he's also now justifying uh, the intelligence claims of the president, uh, which now we have the evidence, we have the proof, four years too late, uh, that those statements were flat out wrong. And um, these weren't close calls. They made things up. It's, it's hard really to recreate in our minds just how trusting most Democrats were, how, how most, most Americans were, how the media truly was in a, in a patriotic rallying behind the president after 9-11. Does the context in, in, of that in any way change the way we should be thinking about this report today?
Well, Keith, the fact that 80, 90 percent of the American people supported the president, that we were all wanting to do something uh, about 9-11, doesn't change the legal responsibilities of the Congress uh, to do oversight. It doesn't change the legal responsibilities of the intelligence community to analyze and report the truth. And very few of them did. One of them, the State Department Intelligence Community, the State Department Intelligence Bureau, uh, was absolutely spot on. You never heard that at the time. You were never told that mm -hmm. there were dissenting opinions. Uh, Democrats, prominent Democrats today said that impeachment was not a remedy to this. But, but can anybody argue with a straight face post Lewinsky that, that, that these lies, the blood and treasure that they cost us don't demand some kind of remedy? And is there some other kind of remedy? Well, there may be some other kind of remedy. There may be uh, some sort of truth and reconciliation commission process that's been tried in other countries, in South Africa, Salvador, and whatnot, mm. uh, where if you come forward and, and admit uh, that you were in error, or admit that you're, you lied, admit that you did something, then you're forgiven. Otherwise, you are censured in some way. Well, I, don't, I just don't think we can let these people back into polite society and give them jobs on university boards and corporate boards and, and just let pretend that nothing ever happened when there are 4,000 American dead and 25,000 Americans grievously wounded and they'll carry those wounds and suffer all the rest of their lives uh, someone should have to pay in some way for the decisions that they made to mislead the American people. Speaking of coming forward, I was wondering if there'd be an opportunity to raise this issue with you because he's so he was so connected to you in a, in, a, in a different context when your first criticisms became known around 2004 and before the election. What, in a weird way, is, is Scott McClellan's book kind of the, 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 the passageway from this being a, a, a theoretical discussion to, to a, almost a textbook saying how they, how they managed to sell us this garbage? Well, Scott McClellan's book is further proof. Uh, it's sort of the, the other end of, of this mm -hmm. big Senate intelligence report. But Scott also is asking for forgiveness. You know, he asked me after he left your program and I bumped into him, uh, literally coming through the revolving door in a hotel. And metaphorically, no, really, he was coming through a revolving door. And he asked me to forgive him. And I think we do have to forgive people who ask for forgiveness. You know, the 9-11 uh, families uh, forgave me my inadequacies in dealing with Al-Qaeda, uh, and I greatly appreciated that. Uh, we do need to forgive people, but first they have to admit they lied. A simple equation. Richard Clark, former White House counterterrorism advisor and author of Your Government Failed You. As always, sir, a great pleasure. Thank you. Good to be with you, Keith. If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs>